It's big, it's boxy, and it's the one SUV that both dictators and socialites can agree on. It is, of course, the all-new Mercedes-Benz G550. And we're going to put it to the test on this episode of Driving Sports TV. The Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon is a legend. Through the years, it's gained a reputation as a tough and rugged wagon that'll get you anywhere. That has also earned it quite a following around the world. So it's not really too surprising that for the first complete redesign since the Nixon administration, it pretty much looks the same. This is the 2019 G550. It's the entry-level trim of a two-model lineup. Starting price is a humble $124,500. As you see it here with a number of extras, the price does jump up a bit to $134,715 US dollars, including destination. It's funny how 10 grand in options doesn't sound like much at this price point. If you want something cheaper and less capable, there's always the new GLE, which is nice. I mean, I, I wouldn't pick a GLE to take over a small country, whereas the G-Wagon? Under the hood is a 4-liter V8 with twin turbochargers. It puts out 416 horses and 450 pound-feet of torque. Mercedes claims a 0-60 to 60 time of 5.6 seconds. Aerodynamics be damned. Economy does suffer a bit from the shape. EPA rates it at 13 in the city and 17 on the highway. But if you're shopping for a G-Wagon, you're probably not going to compare it to a Prius. Or even a RAV4 hybrid for that matter. Power is pushed through a 9-speed automatic to all four wheels. It even has a dual-range gearbox and a fun off-road mode called G-Mode, which we'll get into later. In the back of this big box is a sideways swinging door, giving access to a very tall interior space. As of this video, Mercedes-Benz has not yet released official cargo capacity numbers, but it does seem to be adequate for the class. Seats do fold down, leaving a tiered floor. AC power in the back does add some nice functionality. Towing capacity, an impressive 7,700 pounds. The second row is nicely equipped, and check out that leather. Fancy. And of course, no surprise, there is plenty of headroom. Passengers get three-stage heating on the seats, plus climate control, and hey, remember cigarette lighters? Yeah, the G550 has one. The center armrest folds down, providing a pair of cup holders. The old G-Wagon had modern amenities tacked onto an ancient chassis. With this new model, Mercedes was able to provide a thoroughly modern experience with surfaces and materials befitting the high entry price. And for a nice change, they were able to accommodate the infotainment screen in the main design and not just tack it on there. Still, for fans of the previous G, it should be familiar enough. Three differential locks are still front and center, and the door pulls are just as horrible as they've always been. But I guess G owners like slamming doors? Doors aside, the interior experience is really quite remarkable. Burmeister surround sound is even standard. A push of the start button kicks the analog dials into life. The small but useful multi-function display nestled in the gauge cluster there uh, is probably quite familiar to anybody who's been in a modern Mercedes. It is shared with other cars in the lineup. Tiny touch-sensitive pads on the wheel control navigating the functions. It's easy to use and the main menu design looks great. The same design ideology is carried over to the main infotainment. This can be controlled by a second wheel mounted controller or you can use the center mounted touchpad dial for deeper functionality, like writing with the stroke of a finger. This makes navigation search both fast and easy. The same controller can also be used to engage the optional massage units in the front seat, climate control, and a lot more. Plug in a mobile device for access to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto integration. A separate rocker allows you to engage various drive modes, everything from sport to eco, and those do what they say. Hit reverse and you get a standard surround camera. Wheel track lines help you navigate parking lots like a pro. And that is just the tip of the safety iceberg built into this new G. Traffic sign assist, active braking, lane detection with assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot ID, all the favorites are here. Plus, all the lights are now LED. 
Of course, you don't buy a G just to visit the mall parking lot. Well, you might, but you would be doing it a disservice because this one, it's shockle-proofed, according to the plaque on the side. So let's see how this all-wheel drive system works in everyday driving. What we have here is sport mode with traction control turned off. In this everyday mode, torque split is 40% to the front and 60 to the back. Because our rig was also equipped with the optional $1,400 adaptive suspension, the dampers firm up in sport mode. This makes it less wobbly than you might expect when darting through the country on windy B roads. In fact, it's downright fun to drive, which isn't something that could always be said about the G-Class. The G550 originally started as a military vehicle. They began design in 1972, the same year I was born, and uh, it was a, wasn't until about 1979 that they actually sold it to the public over in Europe. They didn't sell it here in the US. By 2002, people were importing these off the gray market and spending upwards of $200,000 on them. Back when I went to high school here in Kirkland, I saw a few of these running around and they were unicorns. When you saw one, you're like, that does not belong here, that is awesome. But the funny thing is people were paying $200,000 for even at the time, what was old technology. Heck, I read that the steering mechanism in the old vehicle was designed by GM in 1938. That's how old the, the previous design was. It was designed to be a solid military vehicle, kind of like our Jeep, but German. So way more complicated in general. Now, the funny thing here is just this design. I mean, it is a square brick. So aerodynamics, yeah, it doesn't have any of that. <laughs> so you're looking at 17 miles to the gallon freeway in a best case scenario. Uh, I drove this for six hours yesterday on the freeway and I averaged between 15 and 17, so that's pretty legit. Because uh, of course I do not drive just at 55 miles per hour. We have 70 mile per hour limits around here. And I have to say, you know, the seating position is just awesome. Uh, the whole drive command view here is just amazing. Visibility is just superb. Uh, and the new electronics, they really make this vehicle worth the plus $100,000 experience that you're paying for. Whereas previously, you were really buying a G550 just for the reputation of it. This new G550, it's actually worth buying just because it's a really good vehicle. I mean, this gives you Mercedes-Benz high-end interior class but with off-road capability, that'll leave most other vehicles in the dust outside of a Jeep Wrangler. I mean, and even with a Jeep Wrangler, it'd give it a good run for its money. This new one is actually bigger than the old one, but just by a little bit. The benefit here is, of course, increased legroom in the second row. Uh, you also get higher ground clearance, not by much, but you're looking at about nine and a half inches of ground clearance now which makes this way more capable in general off-roading use. So instead of telling you why somebody would wanna buy a G550, I'm gonna show you. And it's not because of this, although this is nice. It's because we're going to the mountains. Let's go ahead and try a 0260. Now it's a little wet out, but um, you know, all wheel drive should have sufficient grip for this to be a representative result. I'm gonna go ahead and set dynamics to sport because why not? Um, I don't think this will do anything like launch control. Uh, so you know what, I'm, I'm, okay, let's go ahead and give it a try, see? Nope, no launch control, but we can preload it at least. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, 30. 40, 50, and 60. <laughs> Dang, for a covered wagon, that's not bad. <laughs> this thing hauls. Gonna get, put traction control back on because I don't wanna live my life too dangerously here. Put uh, drive mode back to comfort, which will soften up that suspension. Yeah, now it has all these drive modes and they are fine and all. I mean, there's basically only three 
eco comfort sport and then there's of course individual where you can customize uh, the four aspects of the vehicle uh, and that comes down to motor response steering response uh, suspension setting because this has adjustable suspension uh, as well as the auto start stop of the motor For our first test, we're going to head out to the Rock Trail Road. This may not require it, but we are going to go ahead and switch the G550 into low range, and that engages one more drive mode called G Mode. There's no other way to select it. Basically, you go into low range, G Mode gets engaged. And G Mode is great for off-road because it adjusts the steering, the throttle response, and most importantly, the suspension, uh, so I can easily get over larger obstacles without getting shaken around. I can feel like I'm floating on a cloud here. Uh, the suspension is so soft all of a sudden. It's really, really quite amazing. According to our off-road gauges here, we're looking at about 22% grade during the steepest portion of the rock climb. Uh, and that's pretty, you know, that, that's, that's pretty serious. I mean, I can see why the, the simple crossovers have trouble going up here. Um, as for a brute like the G-Wagon, yeah, it's not a problem. In fact, this is so easy, I think we need to move on to something a little more difficult. So with that, we'll head deeper into the mountains for a new set of more difficult challenges. Challenge number one, steep rock climb. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the vehicle into low mode. Got low range kicking in there. I gotta put it into neutral. Okay, and as soon as I do that, it clicks into G mode. Let's go ahead, back into drive, and away we go. So I have the off-road screen here. I haven't locked any differentials yet. This is just the first, I wanna turn off parking meters. This is 22, 25, 29% grade, we have 32% grade, 33, 37, 40, 40% grade right now. And up we go. Haven't had to lock any differentials yet. And that's mostly because we're just climbing up rocks and fairly clean rocks at that. And yes, they are a little moist, but still they have enough grip for these all season radials to really get me up. It's really quite amazing to be off-roading in a situation as luxurious as a Mercedes. <laughs> it really is great. For the second test, we'll hit the cross-cut climb. This has been quite a challenge for anything but the most rugged of off-roaders. Okay, now this, this is gonna be interesting. Put it into drive. We're automatically kicked into G mode. Let's do it. So, so far, I've just locked number one, which is the center differential. Let's see what that does. Oh, still got slip. See, sometimes center differential isn't enough. Now, if we have momentum, yeah, we probably could bust through that, but let's just make it as easy as possible. Let's go ahead and go to number two, which will lock the rear differential. Okay, drive one, rear differential locked. Uh, let's go back into we go. Let's do it. Okay, look at that grade. Yeah, it's 30%. Very steep, very um, loose though. Oh, oh, can't do it. Now while I'm here, well, let's go ahead and switch it into uh, three. Boom, there we go. <laughs> and that is why you need three locking differentials on a G-Wagon. <laughs> nice. 
Of course, what goes up must come down. Hopefully we don't come down too quickly. Now, there is no hill descent control on this, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it with uh, engine compression braking as well as my braking foot. Uh, I wanna go ahead and put it back into off-road mode. Well, it's already in off-road mode, I just wanna get the screen up. I currently have all three dips locked. Uh, slippery. And down we go. Oh, okay. No problem. I wasn't worried at all. <laughs> because the G550 only came with all season radials, we're gonna go ahead and skip anything more challenging. But I think it is easy to see just how capable this machine is. Think of a Jeep Wrangler meets S-Class. Since so few owners outside of Dubai will likely ever take their G-Wagons off-road, let's finish this review up with some of the features that really are important to the everyday buyer. The really nice update with this 2019 model of the G-Wagon is the addition of all the extra safety stuff that Mercedes-Benz has been rolling out to all their vehicles. It comes standard with a pretty good list of items. You get blind spot warning, it has collision mitigation, uh, it also has adaptive cruise control with lane detection. But the lane detection is the annoying kind. It's not the kind which will auto steer for you and center in the lane like a Volvo. No, this one, <laughs> it's, it's way worse. Let me go ahead and turn it on. And there, we have lane detection, it is on. There's a lane, and what's it gonna do? Uh, well, in this case, it did absolutely nothing. Let's make sure that it detects that lane, okay? Uh, lane detection is on. I am cruise controlling. I'm not doing anything. Let's see, what is it gonna do? It's gonna do nothing. Honestly, after driving all the new 2019 Mercedes-Benz vehicles, I kind of expected that the G would have similar lane centering tech to what you would find in the less expensive C-Class, but it clearly doesn't. However, considering all this rig does do right, that doesn't dissuade me from really loving this beast. I'm Ryan Douthit, thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe, leave a comment, share this with your friends. We make these videos for you and we hope you enjoy them. Also next week, we have coming up the world's first review of the new 2020 Subaru Legacy. Be sure to subscribe, you won't wanna miss it. We'll see you then.